Greetings Animal Crossing fans, I'm Eurogamer's Ian Higton and welcome to my humble Swindon home. This is where I chill out after a hard day of trash collection and gang avoidance and as you can see I've put a lot of effort into designing the perfect interior. Or wait, maybe it's the opposite of that. Anyway, I'm in my house today because this week's Animal Crossing video is all about my top 20 best villager house interiors in the game. Houses that, like my cosy, non-threatening punishment room here, have had a lot of thought and effort put into their design. With around 400 villagers in Animal Crossing New Horizons, it's been physically impossible for me to visit the houses of each and every one of them. But thanks to everyone who has allowed me to fly to their islands in search of interesting animals, I have been able to enter quite a few. So without further ado, here are the top 20 Animal Crossing New Horizons villager house interiors that I've discovered on my travels, starting with number 20. <laughs> As a jock villager, you'd probably expect Tank's house to look like some kind of gym, but this lovable rhino said oh no to that idea and instead modelled his house on a beautiful bamboo grove. It's not a hugely detailed home, but Tank's love of nature is reflected in his table full of bonsai trees, the stone furniture dotted around the edges of the room and his piping hot cypress bathtub. The thing I really love about this house though is the fact that its wallpaper reminds me of the Arashiyama bamboo grove in Kyoto, which I visited with my wife as part of our honeymoon. Thanks for the memories! I'd love to shout from the rooftops about how cool Colton's palatial pad is, but if I do that too early on in this list video, I'll just end up going hoarse. Instead, I'll just go at a gentle trot and point out how regal everything looks, from the palace tile flooring and the grand piano, right through to the gorgeous fireplace and pink lily record player. Don't let those flat palace walls foal you though, if you spin the camera around you'll notice there's a parallax effect on the pillars that gives Colton's room an extra layer of depth. Oh, and if you haven't already noticed, there's quite a lot of those pillars too, so you know his house must be pretty stable. <laughs> Raymond is no stranger to Animal Crossing best of lists, but it might come as a surprise that for once it's not his eyes which are the prize. Raymond's office themed interior may not be the most extravagant in the game, what with it being full of stuff that reminds us of boring paperwork and all, but everything in here goes perfectly with Raymond's office worker aesthetic. There's a water cooler which is the perfect place for gossiping about other villagers, there's a whiteboard full of scribbles, a fax machine and a load of items from the office furniture set like the chairs, desk and document stack. Even the monochromatic tile flooring fits in perfectly with the office space vibe, but the piece de resistance has to be the Newton's cradle desk toy that ticks away in the centre of the room. It's just the perfect plaything for this pencil pushing pussycat. <laughs> If you've been looking for a home in the country, you definitely shouldn't let Norma's farmyard inspired house go pasteurised. There's nothing Norma about this cow's beautiful living quarters and as you can see from her gorgeous meadow vista wallpaper and daisy meadow flooring, she's really milked this theme for all it's worth. Combine all of that with the butter churn, hay bale and assorted wooden furniture and you've got an utterly delightful place to chill when city life is stressing you out. Norma might not be one of the most popular villagers in Animal Crossing, but this bovine's house is bovine and she's worth inviting to your island for her house alone. Honestly, when have I ever steered you wrong? <laughs> At first glance it might look like you'd get a frosty reception at Gwen's house, but nothing could be further from the truth. Even though the flooring is made from ice, walking around this gorgeous home gives me happy feet, and I think one of the main reasons why might be because of Gwen's pretty pink frozen bed that glistens and shimmers in the corner of the room here. 
I'm also a big fan of Gwen's ice wall partition, which has obviously been built so she can have a bath in private, even when she has guests around. I guess voyeurism just doesn't fly with her. After cold calling at this house, I ended up spending a significant amount of time here, and the only thing I wanted to know when I left was Gwen I could visit again. <laughs> Rooney the Kangaroo's house may not be the most homely home on this list, what with the uncomfortable corrugated iron shanty walls surrounding it, and the fact that it probably smells like an old armpit, but the attention to detail that's gone into making it look like a real-world gym has to be admired. With so much equipment on hand, from the boxing ring bed through to the treadmill and punch bag, there's absolutely no way Rooney here could ever be called a pouch potato. But let's hope he remembers to do his stretches before he climbs onto that weights bench there. If he's not properly warmed up before he starts, he could end up in hospital. <laughs> I would be a complete hypocrite if I insulted Biff's house for being a little bit on the scruffy side, but in all honesty, this inner-city alleyway-inspired living room doesn't look like the comfiest of places to live. There's not a cushion in sight, and instead it's just wall-to-wall -wall concrete, which has been covered in graffiti and paint splatters. In fact, the only real place to sit down would be the saddle of that bike there, which would get wheelie painful after a while. This house may be on the sparse side of things when it comes to furniture, but if you love the more eccentrically designed homes in Animal Crossing, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that you'll be saying hip hippo hooray if Biff ever settles on your island. <laughs> When it comes to home interiors that are based on outside locations, Han's ski resort-inspired abode has to be the best yeti. His ski slope wallpaper is animated to show snowflakes gently falling over skiers and snow-covered mountains, and this gives the room a very open feeling, something that is only enhanced by the tree and grass standees that sit by the edge of the north wall. While some of you might think this house looks abominably drafty, Hans here keeps things warm with two separate fires. A big bonfire to warm him and his pals as they chill out on the half-log benches, and a smaller one that will keep him toasty as he snuggles in his sleeping bag. See what I mean? The heating in this house is snow joke. <laughs> If you're a lover of fruit, you're bound to find this next house appealing, because its owner Tangi has filled it to the brim with produce-inspired products that match her orange-loving aesthetic. As you can vitamin C here, her house is decorated wall-to-wall -wall with fruit-themed wallpaper and furniture, including an Apple TV, lol, a pear-shaped bed, and even an orange-themed table with a fruit-infused water dispenser on top. Do you see it? It's right there, next to the boxes of fruit in the corner of the room. With a house as beautifully fruity as this one, it's safe to say that Tangy is anything but a pipsqueak. This next house will definitely brighten up your day, as its owner, Soliel, has crammed it full of imperial-themed furniture. You can tell she's no amateur when it comes to interior design too, because everything here looks so elegant and high-end. Seriously, there really is no way to throw shade at this house, because everything from the cherry blossom branches and the imperial bed, right through to the Grecian urn, black whirlpool bath and imperial tile flooring, is designed to give you a sunny disposition. If it's only just dawned on you that this house is a star attraction, you need to get hunting for Soliel right now, because when the sun's out, the fun's out. Tex the Penguin has to be the coolest musician around. I mean, why else would he build a practice room inside an actual ice palace? 
I'm not afraid to say that I'm a huge fan of Tex's chilled out rehearsal area, but if all these instruments don't drum up some enthusiasm for his house, hopefully you'll be able to support the use of those frozen pillars at the back of the room there. My favourite thing about Tex's house though has to be the mint choc chip ice cream on the frozen counter there. That will be the perfect thing to munch on as you watch Tex pull off a face melting guitar solo. <laughs> You'd be forgiven for thinking there's not much room in Sheldon's house, what with all the fantastically fungal furniture lying around and all that, but would you believe it? Once you visit here, you'll never want to leave. Yup, the home of Sheldon the Squirrel is positively nuts, but I love the way he's leaned on the forest theme and complemented his wallpaper and flooring with items of furniture from the Mushroom series. Hopefully Sheldon isn't thinking about moving anytime soon, because none of that furniture looks very Portobello at all. Although, if he does manage to carry some of it outside, there might finally be enough room in there to play some sports. Sheldon's house might not be for everyone, but I'm sure it'll grow on you if you spend enough time there. Especially seeing as Sheldon is such a fun guy to hang out with. <laughs> This next house is an utter car crash, but in a good way, because Rasher the Grumpy Pig here lives in a literal car park that's full of uncomfortable items like rusty barrels and iron girders. The way this house is themed around the parking flooring and chain link fence wallpaper couldn't have been a rash decision on behalf of the designers, because a lot of thought has been put into which props have been placed here, the most fitting of which has to be the race car bed at the back of the room. Rasher's house may not be the prettiest of places to go swining and dining, but I'd be telling Porky's if I said that I didn't want to have it on my island. Say aloha to June, an incredibly cute villager whose house is just as lovable as the cub herself. Using her sandy beach flooring and incredible animated tropical vista wallpaper as a base, June has created a beautiful mermaid-themed island paradise, and she's decorated it wall-to-wall -wall with super-cute coral pink shell-themed furniture. If you're not feeling well, why not seize the day and give June a ring on the shell phone that Tom Nook gave you, because I'm sure she'll be more than happy to have you over to recuperate in her amazing home. Just watch out for sea urchins that may be hidden in the sand. They haven't been left there on porpoise, but I have heard rumours that they sometimes wash up on the beach, and if you stand on them, well, it really krills. <laughs> If you haven't already guessed by my tourist of this room, Julian here is big on astrology. So big in fact that his entire house is built around the astrology theme, with animated cloud flooring and glow-in-the-dark starry sky wallpaper creating a gorgeous scene for his Capricornucopia of Zodiac-inspired furniture. Honestly, it's a wonder how he even managed to ram all of this in here in the first place. If you're fortunate enough to have Julian on your island, spend a bit of time hanging out with him in his house, and it'll soon be crystal clear why I've put him near the top of this list. <laughs> This next home is golden, literally. Heavily inspired by the Egyptian pyramids, the interior of Anka's home is full of golden furnishings, ranging from a golden toilet and golden dishes through to a pile of gold bars. What on earth she's doing with those three golden caskets and what she keeps in them is anyone's guess, but here's hoping it's just more gold and not what you'd normally keep in a casket, because that would be more than a little bit creepy and I think I'd have to call for my mummy. There's much more Egyptian-inspired imagery for you to excavate in this awesome home, though, including wallpaper that's covered in hieroglyphics, cracked and worn pyramid tile flooring, and even a whopping great pyramid as the centrepiece. I'm not 100% sure that that's the best use of space, considering it takes up most of the room and you couldn't even sleep on it or use it as a table, but Anka here seems to dig it. Unless she's just in denial, that is. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
Now this is one house where you wouldn't need to use your imagination to play the floor is lava game, because in Phoebe's house, the floor is quite literally lava. Look, see? Thanks to this awesome custom lava flooring, you can even splash around in it, although I'd recommend doing that in more suitable footwear than these rubber trainers. If you hadn't already guessed, Phoebe is meant to resemble a phoenix, so, like the mythical beast she takes after, her home is also a bright spark, with magma cavern walls and a huge bonfire burning away in the corner. I'm a big fan of the animated lava on the walls, of course, but my favourite thing in this house has to be the way the flooring has a kind of heat haze rippling over the top of it. It's seriously hot stuff. Honestly, I'm burning with jealousy for anyone who has this house on their island, so it's really no wonder that I've put it near the top of my Hall of Flame. <laughs> Zucker is a strange beast. He's an octopus who's mimicking a foodstuff that's made out of bits of his octopus pals, and his house is basically set up to look like he's also selling food that's made out of bits of his pals. That's some hardcore, no-shame cannibalism right there, my multi-limbed friend. Even though Zucker's takoyaki-inspired fashion sense may be a little bit morbid, that doesn't stop the interior of his house looking pretty darn cool. And as you can see, it's set up to look like he's an outdoor vendor, complete with multiple food carts and a lovely view of the city. Zucker's house is definitely the place to be if you're feeling a little bit peckish, but maybe tell Marina and Octavian to steer clear of it for a while, because no one's seen hide nor hair of Inkwell since New Leaf, and Zucker's just cooked up a suspiciously fresh-looking batch of takoyaki. <laughs> Not placing Lucky this high on this list would have been a grave mistake indeed, because this bandaged beagle lives in his very own spooky cemetery, and it looks fantastic. This haunted house is delightfully spooky, and the graveyard aesthetic perfectly matches Lucky's undead look. The ramshackle walls and dirt flooring give this whole area a rather chilling vibe, but it's the three western-style gravestones at the back of the room that will really make your blood run cold. Not only that, though, there's also a throwback Skull CD player that pumps out the song KK Dirge, and, best of all, an entire skeleton that does a scary pose when you prod it on the bone. This is by far the creepiest kennel in the entire game, and I bet all of you horror fans out there are just dying to have it on your island. Just make sure you sniff it out before Halloween, though, otherwise you're going to be doggone disappointed. <laughs> And finally, my number one best villager house interior in Animal Crossing New Horizons has to be the one that belongs to Octavian. Octavian's house here is literally out of this world, and there are loads of cool props in here that take up space near the back of the room. Before we go rover those though, I just want to give a special shout out to how well the lunar surface flooring and starry night sky wallpaper go together. It makes Octavian's house look like it's set on an asteroid, and I just love that idea to the moon and back, because it works so well with all the space-themed furniture that he's abducted. There's an astronaut suit, a space rocket with a launch pad, a satellite that gently sways in the air, and even a space shuttle that slowly spins in the corner of the room. Jupiter recognised the true star of this room though, the huge flying saucer in the centre, which, when you touch it, plays this awesome animation of a little alien beaming down to the surface of the asteroid. I'm 100% serious when I say that Octavian's house is the best house in the game, and to not have it on your island is complete lunacy. <laughs> And with that final entry done, this video is almost over. Those were the 20 best villager house interiors in Animal Crossing New Horizons, according to me, but I bet I've missed loads of good ones this time. I mean, for a start, there's Barrel's house, which I've never seen, but I've heard is some kind of creepy surveillance centre. 
Or what about Buzz, who I hear lives in a car park full of vending machines? There's so many cool homes to discover in this game, and I bet I've only just scratched the surface with the ones I've seen. So do share your favourites in the comments below, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and please think about subscribing to Eurogamer for more Animal Crossing list features coming soon. If you haven't had your fill of AC yet, by the way, there are some more videos for you to click on on screen right now. So why not have a watch of those while I start trying to tidy my house up a bit? Honestly, I know I live on basically a scrap heap, but you'd think I could at least put a little bit of effort into keeping my part of it tidy. Thing is, all this travelling around finding houses is just so tiring. The last thing I want to do when I get back from another Dal Airways flight is to do some chores.